Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining the community call today. I know it's been an anticipated one. Uh, we skipped over last community call. Um, definitely have a few major topics that we want to go over today, including the V21, V3 migration, an update with Almanac, the patent filing, and the new AMM design. So we'll kind of jump right into that. I'll start with the V21, V3 migration. There was a four-phase proposal that was approved by the Dow this past Wednesday, and it will begin uh, with phase one, the cool down phase. Once the design and implementation work is complete, and that's estimated to be in approximately a week and a half, I asked about it on Wednesday, I was told within about two weeks. So it looks to be that sort of time frame we're working with at the moment. Um, the migration of the protocol on liquidity is phase three of the proposal. So assuming that um, everything goes smoothly, I'm thinking probably about a week later that'll occur. So um, then there's the question of whether the UI will reopen on V2.1. It will. However, the proposal passed by the DAO clearly and methodically, I guess, outlined a withdrawal strategy, which quotes from the um, actual proposal prevents gaming the system to minimize an LP's potential losses. Enabling the UI on V2.1 prior to the completion of phase one would contradict what the proposal states and will therefore reopen post phase one. Definitely want to encourage anybody with any questions or comments regarding the proposal and how the migration and withdrawals will work to um, add their comments and questions to the ongoing proposal. Glenn, if he hasn't already, is going to be sharing that link in all of the channels for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in terms of Almanac, they are starting their test recommendations this upcoming week, and the Bancor DAO will start testing those implementations. They posted a, um, well, they started, I guess, a community chat, a discussion in our discourse community chat room with their sort of timeline that they're working with. And any updates, any questions, any comments, any and all having to do with Almanac, if everybody wants to just go ahead straight to <clears throat> that source, I think that it'll kind of be like the universal Almanac kind of discussion board for everything happening here on out. It looks like according to their most recent update that the launch of the daily optimization service will begin November 1st. And that brings us to the patent. So Mark, if you can join me up here. I'm here. Oh, you're here. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so we're having the call. We postponed the last community call. So uh, assuming the patent has in fact been filed, Correct. Yes, the uh, the provisional is in. The provisional. Okay. And what exactly was in the provisional? Then we haven't been able to speak about it. Like, what is the actual innovation? Okay. So the provisional is separated into two sections. Um, the first section describes um, some new mathematics surrounding uh, bonding codes, and the second part. Um, then uh, describes how that uh, that new parameterized bonding curve can be applied to a completely novel way of thinking about um, A of M's and what they do. Okay. Um, did you say two parts to that? What? A, okay. Well, what else can you tell us? Can you tell us a little bit more about the the bonding curves? Uh, sure. So the um, you know, that, that first section has uh, something like 300 equations in it. Um, and so I think, you know, the the parts that I talk about here are, are going to be understandably brief. Um, but essentially, um, they are a, um, it, it's a, a general class of, of, um, of thinking about an invariant function um, that, you know, that can be used for, for AMMs. Um, and it encompasses kind of everything that we've seen um, in any protocol at the moment in a single function. So 
uh, we can do concentrated liquidity curves the same way, uh, or you know, in a, in a very similar fashion, achieve the same thing that Uniswap V3 does, or that Hyper DMM does, or that Trader Joe does. Um, we can also achieve um, constant sum or constant price, so like what M Stable does. Um, there is a, a version of that of that function where you replace one of the constants with a, another function that produces the stable swap algorithm that's used by Curve. Um, so there's, you know, it, it's really an infinitely generalizable um, equation um, that you can use to um, to produce uh, literally any um, any desired outcome. There are also th things that you can do with it, um, where uh, through control of certain parameters you can get things that we've never seen in a DEX before. Um, things like um, uh, curves uh, with negative curvature or with convexity. Um, and there are some interesting applications there, but essentially yeah, the, the, the novel invariant function that we described there and that I went to um, exhaustive, um, an exhaustive extent demonstrating it, um, it basically covers a, 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 an infinite family of bonding curves and we can use, um, we, we can use any um, any of those uh, features um, simply by by adjusting the parameters that I've set there. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a very general um, uh, it's a very general invention in that sense. Okay, and what about the new AMM design? I want to speak more to the curves, but I feel like we're going to get a little bit too technical on the community call. Um, and. I'm actually like, would you be open to, we've had our DAO discussions and things on Discord before, would you be open to pushing this, like diving deeper into this with us, like with the community, since this doesn't really just seem like the proper platform, like timing for it, would you be open to doing that, kind of picking it apart a little bit and getting a little bit deeper with us? Yeah, absolutely. I think that there's um, DAO discussion calls and uh, what we did with the simulator and everything that um, is going to be a, an excellent um, an excellent forum to to really you know dig into the weeds of that so um, for community members that are interested in in um, learning the the new general theory um, then absolutely i'd be happy to um, to host either um, a, a single lecture or a series of lectures there that that really dig deep into the new mathematics Okay, awesome. Thank you. So we'll get that scheduled then. Um, I just got, I saw a message that I was a little bit quiet. So if I was quiet and anybody couldn't hear me, I apologize. I'll be sure to speak up from here on out. What about the new AMM design? That was kind of the next thing, you know, we wanted to wait on the patent to be filed. The provisional is filed now. What can you tell us about the new AMM, AMM design? You said it's nothing that has before been seen in DeFi or in CFI centralized exchanges, like in what way? Yeah, so it's like, uh, I think it's really the major innovation that's, to, that's detailed that um, because it, it is a, um, a, a pretty significant departure from how we think about AMMs and what their purpose is. Um, and um, yeah, it's, I, I would, there are various concepts around DeFi right now, especially in the AMM space that are kind of orbiting um, the, the idea that um, but I don't think anyone's really nailed it or really no one's really um, managed to bring together all of the necessary pieces um, in a single in a single product. Um, whereas I think the, um, the, the, the invention that we've described there actually does that for the first time. I'm really, um, I'm, I'm really, I'm really excited about it. I'm very proud of it. Um, Can you and, two of those? Um, I, I don't think that it, Think this is really the the correct um, you know time to be having a, a you know a full product call. Um, but what I can say is that um, we are um, we are in the process of of creating the the white paper and the black paper. They're actually um, essentially already written or in various stages of being written. Um, and I'm, I have to check off a couple of things there, and then um, I, I'm gonna um, get, get some. Uh, edits and feedback from a few other people, and then we're going to be publishing that. Um, and so I think that you know, rather than describe, um, you know, what is a you know, the, the, the the patent is seventy five pages, I think, or slightly more than that. Um, and like as I said before, it's got something like three hundred plus equations in it. Um, and so to describe the, the the product on a, a brief community call, I think, is going to be a little ambitious. 
um, I think that the the correct uh, course of, of action is to wait for the the white paper and the light paper to be ready, especially because they're like I said that they're essentially already produced. We've just got to um, put the finishing touches and publish them. So I think that that's the the correct um, the, you know the correct process for describing the new product. Okay. Um... So it sounds like, well, one, it sounds like we're not just going to have one DAO discussion on the actual, the patent and what it consists of. I think it's going to probably be a few, and maybe we can also include the details of the new AMM design in that as well, once the light paper and the white paper are released. Yeah, of course. I think that these two things are inseparable from each other. Right? The reason why that math, the reason why the math was, was developed in the way that it's defined the way that it is, is so that we can achieve this, um, this specific mechanism. Um, and so, you know, it, until you understand the math, understanding the mechanism is, is pretty difficult, but obviously we're, uh, the, the, the whole purpose of having a white paper is so that you can kind of disconnect those things heuristically um, and then just start discussing about, discussing the product directly. Um, but it's on the on the DAO calls and for the people that are interested in, in really digging into it, I'd be very, very happy to show how these two things are the, the product of each other. Okay, but this product isn't the only product that can be formed from the first half of this patent. Am I right in understanding? Correct. Am I right in my understanding? Yeah, yeah. So the um, the general theory behind the bonding curves is, um, you know, like I said, it's a bit of a, a Swiss Army knife. Um, we've already demonstrated that you can get constant product, constant sum, constant price. You can get stable swap invariant. You can get all kinds of things out of it using the same function, which is really nice. Um, and so there are all kinds of, you know, um, uh, you know, financial primitives that can be built on top of that thing. And I'm really interested to see um, what uh, what other uh, what future products we want to want to build on top of it. But I do consider the the new bonding curves as being sort of the core engine um, that's going to, um, you know, power um, a, a lot of the things that we do from here. Okay, and I might be pushing my luck a little bit here because I know you said you don't want to have a full product discussion and get into too much detail and wait until the light paper and the white paper out. But is there like an It's not that I don't want to. Want to. You no, I already it. Yeah, it's it's not that I don't want to. I, I don't want anyone to think that sorry, I'm getting an echo. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, it's not that I don't want to. Uh, I, I I always want to discuss everything all the time. I think it's a question of what is um, you know what is the the best way to make sure that the information is presented in a way that is the most suitable for for mass consumption um, and i think that with the dow calls on discord where we've got enthusiasts there that are um you know playing around with the simulator and you know might even be experimenting with their own smart contract code and things like that um we don't have to worry so much right so it's a completely different um sort of form and so we can discuss all kinds of things there that, um, you know, because the level of engagement is, is much higher and people are actually, um, you know, getting knee deep in the, in the theory, um, that's, that's completely different. Um, whereas I think on the community call, it's, you know, to, to, to talk about anything directly would be akin to an announcement or something to that effect. Um, and I think that that's much better um, handled in a, in a more organized way. Uh, which is why I think that it's important that we stick to the process, um, uh, especially with the, the tried and true method of having white papers and light papers um, you know, in production or at least you know, in, in users' hands before we start discussing product details um, directly. So I think, yeah, that's, that's really um, my, my view on it. It's not that I don't want to, it's just about what's the most effective. Um, and I think that having, um, having that kind of reference material in hand um, is necessary, right? It's almost, it's almost um, you know, ha having a productive conversation about is almost predicated on having that kind of reference material available. And a provisional patent is by no means reference material. It's an extremely dry technical document um, that has more equations in it than words. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it, it, it's just a question of um, how can we progress um, together with the with community in the most um, in the most helpful way. And I think that the, you know, um, the step one was to get the provisional file. Step two is to generate um, the, you know, communication documents, which is why the light paper and the white paper are, are in, in progress. 
And then for the people that really want to get their, their hands dirty in some new AMM math, um, we can do the um, the Dow call and we can discuss everything format there. So I, I think that this is the best way to handle it. Okay, it makes, it makes complete sense. Now, I do want to ask about um, the BNT token now. I know that it's a touchy subject. I don't want to speak to price action at all. I know we can't do any price discussion. I want to like strictly speak to the use case. You know, how will BNT be used in the new design? Can you maybe speak to that a little bit? Right, so the new AMM design um, is monetized via BNT. Um, and so this means that the, you know, access to these, um, these features, this new power that you have um, is actually predicated on, um, on uh, some sort of payment, right? And so this is similar to um, you know, how we collect a, a swap fee today, um, but it's you know, used in a much more general sense. And um, BNT is going to be at the absolute um, uh, at the absolute center of that. And so you can think of uh, that token model um, in terms of um, you know uh, other payment tokens that are already extremely well established. Things like using Link to pay for um, you know price fees um, and you know similar um, similar business models like that. So BNT is going to inherit that utility. And of course, you know. Um, V3 isn't going anywhere, and so um, it, it still has that universal numerator property on, on V3 at the same time. Uh, but importantly, you know, it's not going to be used to as reimbursement. Um, you know, it's not a um, it's not an underwriting token anymore. Um, but you know, where we lose that underwriting utility, um, it now takes on a payment utility instead. Okay, and so. Maybe I might be skipping a little bit here, but you can tell me if what I'm gathering is correct then. So it'll be used as a fee payment token. And with that, I'm looking at how it's going to like expect it to help alleviate the deficit. Right. So maybe then me making assumptions and speaking, I should just ask you. Directly. Right. Right. So like uh, if we if we're collecting. Um, if we're collecting fees uh, via the system in uh, USDC, right, from the token that users actually have at the time that they're interacting, then those USDCs will need to be converted into BNTs. And so that will mean that USDC will have to be converted on the, the, the V3 pool, because it's the deeper source of BNT versus USDC liquidity. And that will mean that the, the, the balance of, of USDC in that pool will be going up over time, um, while BNT is being extracted and burned from the other side. So um, the you know the uh, because we never do that in reverse, right? We never take BNT and exchange it for USDC. Um, the um, the the bias, right? The um, the overall trend should be towards recovering the deficit and eventually moving towards surplus as well. Okay, and then you mentioned V three still exists. So this was kind of an, a question that I'd asked you when we first spoke about the new AMM design when it first came up in conversation, and it was will v3 kind of be redesigned with this new amm design or is this you know i've seen it be referred to as v4 or you know is like what is this going to be its own standalone product yeah i think from a product perspective it's standalone it has a it, it appeals to an entirely different demographic and it has different um you know a, a distinct use case from v3 um, but I still consider, you know, the Bancor protocol to be the, the set of products that it has. And so I find, you know, I, I find version names and other things to be very unhelpful, um, although they do serve a, um, like a marketing and product purpose. Um, from my perspective, it's still just the, the collection of things that you do that, that uh, makes the project. And so in that sense, I do consider it an extension to everything. Um, but its uh, its actual functionality is distinct from V3 and V2.1. Okay, so it doesn't sound like it's a, a V4 or a redesign, kind of more so its own standalone. I say product for lack of a better term, um, but new. Sure, the pro product is the is the right word. Okay, it is it is a, a different it, a, a different product, but it's kind of like asking, you know, is the uh, if the, I don't know, um, uh, I'm trying to think of um, a good analogy, um, but essentially, you know, the, a, a producer can have a collection of products and those products 
can be distinct um, without necessarily um, being derivatives of each other, right? So like the, the Tesla model, like Tesla right, has a, a, a bunch of different products, like the Tesla Model S and the Tesla Model, I don't know what the other models are, it should, let's just call it the Model M, I don't even know if that's like the car, but whatever, or the Model 3. Um, so Tesla own, like, you know, has both of those products and the, the types of um, consumers that, that want to interact with those products are um, you know, delineated by the features that those different cars have. Um, and I think that that's as good an analogy I can, uh, I can draw between uh, what we've invented here and, you know, um, and something that has a, a real world parallel. It is, a, it is a new product. It does different things. It's not a replacement for V3. Um, it is a, it is something that exists alongside it. And, uh, that doesn't mean that either one of them, um, has no relationship to each other. Um, but they're not predicated on each other. Okay. I understand. So patent, the provisional was filed curves being the first section, new AMM design being the second light paper and white paper will be released. Then, you know, we'll schedule, it sounds like a few. DAO discussion really kind of dig a little bit deeper into both the provisional and the new AMM design. And then product release, am I missing anything in there? I'm kind of trying to get like a sequence of events um, lined that up. That sounds like the correct sequence to, sequence to me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then yeah. I know this isn't your area per se, but I want to ask anyway, and I know that it's been asked. We might first, going back to what our first discussion on the AMM design, you had mentioned that coding already began. Um, that's mm -hmm. still in the works. We're still coding. I say we, you know, Bancor as a whole. Um, yeah, yeah. No, the, the developers are constantly working on the smart contracts. Um, and, you know, they are, it, it's taking form sort of, you know, before our, our eyes. Um, it's, you know, it, it, it Nothing that we would, um, nothing that was being worked on w had to wait for the, the provisional to be filed, for example. The, that was just, uh, the, the provisional is only for things like public disclosure and whether or not we can start discussing um, various parts of it. So, for example, in our, in our case, it's impossible to have a white paper without the provisional in place. So that was like a necessary step for that. But it's not a necessary step. Um, to start actually making the smart contracts. Um, and so, you know, there are some open, um, there are some open issues there. There are some problems um, that, you know, need to be addressed as, as is always the case with smart contract development. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's moving along very well. Um, I'm very excited to see these things starting to take shape. And um, I'm looking forward to um, having it out in the, in the real world and seeing um, what people do with it. Okay, I just saw a comment in the chat and I'm not reading it too much, but I just saw, so Bancor will be a family of products with income generating purposes. Yeah, I've always, I've always considered that to be the case, um, or at least that that was always the, the goal. But yes, I, I do consider, um, I, I think that everyone in this space will eventually have a, a suite of products that all do different things. And um, I think that this is the first step in that direction. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Mark. We will, I guess, get together then. And once the light paper and the white paper are out, we'll get a DAO discussion or a few of them scheduled. And in the meantime, I have one more question, um, but it's probably best suited for Tyler. I know we kind of touched on it a little bit, but it was a specific question that came in from a community member. So Tyler, if you, I know you're on the call, maybe you wouldn't mind joining me for a minute. Hey, yeah, can you hear me, Jen? Yeah, I can hear you. Um, uh, uh, I think you guys pretty much covered this, but yeah, there's been a lot of uh, discussion about branding and the uh, kind of the project trajectory moving forward. Um, and we will still be operating under the Bancor brand. Uh, but we're going to be evolving to, like you guys have discussed, more of a suite of products that are going to facilitate and encourage fee generation. And the idea is to obviously grow the ecosystem, the DAO, uh, quicker. And to do that, we have to ship faster. We have the best smart contract developers pretty much in the space. So I'm like really excited to see what we pump out over the next year. 
Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really great. So the community should expect like specifically branded products from here on out uh, that will be delivered under the Bancor brand. So for me, it's kind of turning this into more of an incubator and less of like a, you know, more or less like single track focus on AMM iterations over time. I think a the AMM space has been developed quite a bit over the last two years. There's still plenty of room to grow. Uh, and obviously this product we're about to release, I think is a pretty powerful, I, you can never call it the last iteration because, <laughs> you know, we'll be working on this for years to come. Um, but I, I think this product is really going to uh, um, target specifically uh, traders and bring a lot of value to this ecosystem and just hearing what everybody else, uh, all the other contributors are working on as well is, is got me equally excited. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing the different products that are released, uh, in the coming months, year, uh, and yeah, should, should have a lot of, um, positive impacts on this ecosystem and the project moving forward. Great. Thanks, Tyler. I appreciate you jumping up here and answering that, addressing that question. Um, all right, everyone. I think one last thing before we call it. Uh, it was mentioned earlier. We'll be having our DAO discussion on Discord once the light paper and white paper are released. We'll also be having our next community call on Discord as well. So if you haven't joined yet, please do. Um, until the release of the papers, I don't believe there are any events scheduled at the moment, but once there are, there are, they'll be visible under the events tab with the option to set reminders for each individual event. So join Discord, keep an eye on that if you haven't already joined. Um, I think that wraps it up. Thank you again, Mark and Tyler, for joining me up here. Thanks to the Bancor community and everyone on the call for joining us.